You, uh, excuse me, what are you doing here? This is a private apartment. Hey, take it easy, Mr. Fox. Everything's fine, but you got company. No, I don't. I'm using this apartment this afternoon for a business meeting. You're exactly right, Mr. Fox. You have a meeting with me. Who the hell are you? My name is Tizo Novotny. I'm here about our mutual friend, Mrs. Delia Coleridge. Sit down, Mr. Fox. We have a few things to discuss. That's a lot of bull, Vinny. You don't care any more about the union today than you did 20 years ago. You're not talking about the union. You're talking about Vinny Romano. What's good for old number one? You know so much, Fidelli. How come I haven't seen you around the union lately? Maybe you haven't been keeping your eyes open. That's going to be trouble. I told Vinny to stay clear of Jack. I thought he understood about Mary and everything. Still carry a card, Jack? Sure. Finale isn't going to give up his card, Norman. Not that he has to go out and work for a living, mind you. He doesn't have to do that anymore, but he's got to have his credentials. How can he play like the working man's reporter without a union card? That's right, Vinny. I get to play reporter. Keep an eye on the minor uh, offices of the local. Might take a little payoff here, arrange for a little slowdown there. Get over there, I'm gonna make a call. Hey, uh, Vinny, you're empty. How about another beer, huh? Hey, listen, uh, got any money on the Super Bowl? Ryan's. Now, this is Jumbo Marino. Is Maeve there, please? Oh, no, I'm sorry, Jumbo. She went for a walk along the drive with Father McShane. Jillian, is that you? <laughs> yeah. How are you? Not so good. When do you think she'll be back? Well, we told her to take her time. I'm helping Mrs. Shaw with the kids. Why? What's up? Well, I got Giovanni down here at the Gennaro Social Club. He's been drinking slow but steady all afternoon, and he's looking for a fight. <sighs> Uh-oh. Yeah, we can always strong on him, but I figured uh, Maeve could talk him out of it, you know? Yeah, I do know. And you're probably right, but I'm afraid she's going to be gone for the rest of the afternoon. I wonder if uh, maybe I could be some help. Well, I tell you, it's kind of like the old days. Come near me and I'll bust your head, knock your head off, you know. And you had plenty of experience with that. Oh, Jumbo. It's all so sad. Yeah, it is. Ah, uh, look, uh, let me see what I can do, all right? I mean, I don't think I can make matters worse. No, do me a favor and hurry. I'll be right there. Thanks. Hey. I'm sorry, but Mrs. Coleridge is a valued client of Grimley and Fox. Our relationship with her is privileged. Any business dealings I have with her are strictly confidential, so uh, we don't have anything to discuss, Mr. Novotny. Unless, of course, you're interested in opening an account with us. No. Well, in that case... Sit down, Mr. Fox. I'm sorry, but I have a business meeting scheduled here this afternoon. My client is due any moment. You're expecting Mrs. Coleridge here. But Mrs. Coleridge will not be here today. Forever. Now, I think you better just sit down and listen to me. That's better. Sit down? No, thank you. You behave very badly, Mr. Fox. No style. No class. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm talking about your confidential dealings with Mrs. Coleridge. Unlike you, Mrs. Coleridge has a great deal of class. Furthermore, she is a wife and mother. And recently, she has joined my family. 
in a sort of way. All these reasons, I'm very upset about the way you've been acting. You do, you do know who I am, don't you? Your nephew just married Siobhan Ryan. That's correct. But it doesn't quite answer my question. I read the papers, Mr. Novotny. I know who you are. Excellent. Now then, you have made a loan to Miss Coleridge of $50,000 and taken collateral, a note on Ryan's bar. And you have harassed and blackmailed Mrs. Coleridge. And you've taken advantage of her. You've interfered with her family life. You've pressed presents on her. And now you're going to foreclose on the Ryan bar unless she meets you here today and tomorrow and on and on. I'm very upset, Mr. Mr. Fox. You must make amends. And what did you have in mind? You will declare that her debt is paid in full. You will tear up the note for Ryan's bar, and you will agree not to ever see or talk to her again. Oh, that's out of the question. <laughs> George. Very nice. Huh? You drink to excess, Mr. Fox? No. Never? Rarely. Very smart. You know, George and I were just talking this morning about some people we know that had very bad accidents related to alcohol. Is that right, George? Yeah, it sure was. What happened to Wally Berman at that time at lunch? Oh, Wally drank himself a bottle of nice white burgundy. And he took a little nap on a couch with a lit cigarette in his hand. He never woke up. Mm -hmm. But I think the worst was Henry. Down the staircase, broken neck, fractured skull. Yeah. Wife and two children left behind. How long have you been married, Mr. Fox? Six years. And how old is your oldest child? Four. Nice age. I believe you have Miss Coleridge's portfolio here somewhere. Go get it. Uh, Miss Coleridge's collateral and the, the note on Ryan's bar is among these papers? It is. I need a light for my cigar. Mrs. Coleridge alone. Repaid in full. I'm very happy to see this. You know what you should do with the money? Take a vacation. That's impossible. Not at all. You've been working too hard. You've been neglecting your family. Take your wife and two children and go for three months on the Caribbean. This is a large business to run, Mr. Novotny. I can't afford to take three days off, let alone three months. Oh, yes, you can. Your health depends on it. Actually, my wife has been talking about wanting to see the Aegean. What could be more pleasant? New Year's on the Greek Isles. I think I will take this along as your farewell present to Delia. New Year's? This time tomorrow, be on the plane.
some people don't change. It gives you a nice feeling of continuity in your life. That's right. Even people you don't like, especially people you don't like. You know, something satisfying about bumping into a guy you haven't seen in a long time and discovering that he's the same clown he was 20 years ago. You're just a kid. Even then, you knew he was a jerk. Nice to know that you had good judgment. Vanelli's drunk, Jumbo. Why don't you send him home to bed? Nobody sends me anywhere, Vinny. Well, look who's here. What a pleasure. What a vision. All right. Sure. For you, we break all the rules. Thanks. Here, come on, sit down. Hi, Jack. What are you doing here? Oh, I was in the neighborhood, so I thought I'd stop by for a few minutes, say hello to Jumbo. That's less than true, Julia. Bad move, Jumbo. The truth is that you are busily down here getting yourself into a whole lot of trouble. And I thought maybe you might like to go for a ride. That's a great idea, honey. But uh, Vinny. Do everybody a favor and uh, take Vinny for a ride. Vinny, I think maybe it's time for you to leave. I pay my dues. I spend more time down here than he does. And I'm not about to leave just because Finelli doesn't like the way I parted my hair today. Hey, your haircut's fine, Vinny. But your basic personality gives me a pain. I missed that. Put out! I was at uh, Maeve's when Jumbo called. I spent the whole afternoon with little John and Ryan. You know what she said to me less than an hour ago? She said her daddy's coming to get her soon. What'd you say? I said she was right. Well, you were wrong. Really? <laughs> well, I don't see how you can stay away from her much longer. Why not? Because she needs you. And you need her. Why is that? Because you love Mary. And Ryan is Mary's daughter, and your daughter, and your connection to Mary. Mary's dead. But you're not. Ryan isn't. Go away, Jillian. No. OK. Have a drink. Lou, uh, we need another glass, a uh, bottle of Bartolino. So, oh. how's Frank? Law practice? Frank's sad, and the law practice is going to take care of itself. And I don't really feel like uh, having a drink, thanks. But I tell you, I am a little hungry. You'd like to get me out of here and up to Riverside. You've changed, Jillian. You used to mind your own business. I don't need a nursemaid, or a guardian angel, or a babysitter. All I want is another bottle, some time to myself. Finelli, why don't you take your girlfriend and your bottle of wine and go home to bed? <laughs> What can I do for you? I'm meeting my sister, Mrs. Coleridge. She's waiting over there for me. Hi, Bobby. It's Mr. Reed, isn't it? You got it. You got a permit for what's in that holster? Yes, sir, Lieutenant. Okay. Kind of tough to give up, isn't it? Being a cop. Glad to see you. What was that all about? That was about old habits, making a fool of myself. So how are you feeling any better? I don't know. Not much. I'm beginning to realize what it's going to be like without Roger, and I don't like mm. it. I was so dumb, Bobby. I really messed things up badly. Well, Dee, I can't believe this whole thing is going to last. Oh, 
Try telling that to Roger and see where it gets you. Well, Roger was the one that was playing around to begin with. That doesn't matter. Did you tell him you knew that? Yeah. Well, so what did he say? He can't pretend it's going to change the situation. He doesn't owe money to anybody. No one's hassling him. Shh. Bobby, Tiso knows about this, but I don't want everybody else around here to know. Roger's a very selfish person. Now he's got his own set of rules for himself, which he makes up as he goes along. Yeah. And another one for everybody else. Now his affair doesn't count. But Dan forcing me to go to bed with him means the end of everything. Well, listen, Roger may be selfish, but he's not stupid. Now you give him some time, he's going to realize this whole thing doesn't make much sense. Maybe. But I don't think so. What about Mr. Fox? Oh, Bobby, he was so mad when you pushed him down yesterday. <laughs> but he doesn't know where I am. Yeah, well, I'm going to pay a visit to him this afternoon at his office. No, Bobby, no, no, you don't understand. Honey, I'm not going to touch him. I'm a little hungover today, but I'm not drunk. No, Bobby, really. It might be all over by this afternoon. I'll explain later, but what I'm worried about now is where am I going to stay? I can't go on sleeping at Joe and Siobhan's, and, and you don't have room. And I can't go to Maeve. Well, how much money you got? About $13. Plus a white mink coat. Of course. Bobby, you're a genius. <laughs> I'll sell the coat. Oh, who cares if I can't get what it's worth? And the earrings. What earrings? Oh, Dan gave me these big emerald and diamond earrings. He said they were real. Why didn't I think of this before? You don't know how important it is to me to be financially independent. Yeah, well, honey, I think it's important to everybody. Well, here comes the man himself. Got some good news for you, do you? Oh, I could sure use it. You know my brother, Bob Reed? Tizo Novotny? Good to see you again. Yeah, Mr. Novotny. Sit down. Make yourself at home. Mr. Fox apologizes for the fact he's caused you so much trouble. He's forgiven your loan and gone off with his family for three months' vacation. You'll never hear from him again. No kidding. Tizo. Oh, how can I ever thank you? Don't smile like that. Who needs thanks? Oh, uh, what about? It's all taken care of, too. Just like that? Just like that. Oh. If you'll excuse me, I have some calls to make. Isn't that incredible? Yeah, you can say that again. Oh, come on, Bobby. Not another word. I don't care what anybody says about Tizo Novotny. I think he's Mr. Wonderful. Get a cop. I'm going to press charges. I'm going to see to it that they lock them up. Now, get your hands up. Get your hands up. There's a cop Ooh. down on the corner or else on the Canal Street. Get him. Get a cop. Move. I'll be right back. I have Norm, but the rest of you saw what happened. It was assault. He went after me. He came in here looking for a fight. But you're going to be sorry for this one, Jack. They're going to lock you up, and you won't go home for months. So I'll call you at home tonight. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for coming to see me. Mm -hmm. I love you. I love you, too. <clears throat> you know, if your friend comes up with any more on Mr. Fox, you let me know, okay? Sure, I will. Nice man, your brother. I've heard good things about him. Oh, well, I think he's the best brother in the world. Are you going to tell me any more about what happened? Of course, sit down. Especially about the note on Ryan's. We burned it. Really? You don't have to think about it again. And he sent you a present. Oh, he didn't. Yes, well, not exactly, but it was intended for you, so I thought you ought to have it. Well, I'll sell it, too. He gave me this coat and earrings, and I just realized I can sell them all and have enough to live on for years. I'd be pleased if you let me handle the sale. You know, you can't be too careful about these things. To get the good price, 
You have to know somebody. Well, sure, but I wouldn't want to put you in any more trouble. No trouble. It's my pleasure. At your convenience, of course. Thank you so much. And there's something else that I want to discuss with you. I haven't got it clear in my mind yet, but when I get the details straightened out, I think I have a plan that will interest you very much, Delia. Oh, well, all I can tell you is so far, I think your plans are terrific. A new original reality series on SoapNet. Mom and Dad are moving in for a financial intervention. It's a matter of life or debt. Bank of Mom and Dad. All new Wednesday at 10, only on SoapNet.